Calculating a stock's intrinsic value is crucial for any investor. It's the core of value investing, championed by legends like Benjamin Graham and Warren Buffett. In this video, I'll walk you through the step-by-step -step process of valuing a stock using the discounted cash flow method. By the end of this video, you'll be able to value almost any company and determine if it's under or overvalued. Let's dive in. When we invest in stocks, we usually expect their prices to rise. However, this isn't always the case. Stocks can be overpriced, leading to losses. This is where calculating intrinsic value is essential. Intrinsic value represents a stock's true value, stripped of market hype and sentiment. As investors, we need to focus on a company's cash generation today and in the future. Our returns depend on this. If a company is expected to generate more cash in the future, its stock will be valued higher. If less, then the stock won't be valued as highly. The most common method to calculating a stock's intrinsic value is the discounted cash flow method, which we'll be using today. This helps us determine what we should pay now to secure high returns in the future. Today we'll be analyzing Amazon stock to determine what it's worth. We'll tackle this in four parts. First, we'll forecast Amazon's future cash flows. This can be challenging, as essentially we're predicting the future. To make an informed estimation, we must source data from Amazon's annual reports and make a few assumptions. Second, we need to determine our discount rate. This is unique to every investor, very subjective, so we'll step through the process of determining this. Third, we'll discount our predicted cash flows in step one by our discount rate we determined in step two. In finance terms, this is how we account for the time value of money. In simple terms, we adjust the future cash flows to acknowledge for inflation and our expected investment return. Fourth, and finally, we'll calculate our intrinsic value for Amazon stock. In other words, what we determine their stock to be worth today. We sum up our discounted future cash flows, adjust for Amazon's net debt, and that gives us an estimate of what Amazon should fairly be valued. At this point, we'd compare it to the current market price of Amazon stock. This will tell us whether Amazon stock is under or overvalued according to the inputs to our calculation. So let's get into the spreadsheets. Our first calculation is determining Amazon's free cash flow. This represents how much cash Amazon generates each year, minus the amount of cash they must redeploy into capital expenditure. This is important as it shows how efficiently a company can generate cash, which can then be retained or returned to shareholders as a dividend. We require two pieces of information here, the cash from operations and the capital expenditure. These figures can be picked up from Amazon's annual 10K report in the cash flow statement. Stockopedia can be a great tool here as well to collate this information. As you can see, in 2023, Amazon generated free cash flow of $32 billion a year. This will come in handy later. Our second calculation is determining how fast we expect Amazon's free cash flow to grow. This is where stock valuation turns from being a science to an art, as no two investors are likely to share the same view. So while I could just take the growth rate of free cash flow over recent years, I like to look at a few different indicators. Here, I'll look at the growth of revenue, operating profit, net income before tax, free cash flow, and earnings per share. I've compared these on a three-year compounding basis, as taking note of recent growth is likely to be more representative than say five or even 10 years back. Now I have input the data using Stockopedia, which has gathered the 10K filings from Amazon's income statements. Revenue has grown 22% a year, operating profit 27%, net income 25%, free cash flow 11%, and earnings per share 18%. So Amazon is growing at a very healthy rate with over half a trillion in revenue last year. Taking consideration of all of these factors, we need to assess what rate we think Amazon will grow over the next 10 years or so. For this calculation, I'll take a conservative 15%. When you perform this analysis, use a figure that you feel confident with. Even Jeff Bezos couldn't tell you how much Amazon will perform over future years. So we just need to use a figure that we are comfortable with here. Third up, we can now start building out our future cash flows for Amazon. Starting in year zero, we have our 2023 free cash flow figure of $32 billion. We then apply our growth rate determined in the second step of 15%. In cell C23, we take cell B23 and multiply this by one plus our growth rate. In the formula, we just have to fix our growth rate by using the F4 key. Now we extend this formula right across until year 10. 
As you can see, in year 10, we expect Amazon to generate $130 billion in free cash flow every single year. This isn't far-fetched when we consider that Apple is already at this level, and Amazon is investing heavily into their capital expenditure. Once these capital costs have materialized, Amazon is likely to generate greater revenue and profit, and less cash will be committed to new projects. Now, we must calculate our terminal value. This is the value we expect Amazon to be worth at the end of the 10th year. There is a few ways that we can calculate this terminal value. The one we'll be using, and the simplest, is the multiples method. We simply multiply the free cash flow in the 10th year by a multiple, giving us the value of the company at that point in time. Macro Trends is a great resource here, as you can see how this has changed over time for Amazon. At the moment, Amazon trades at a multiple of about 50 times its earnings. Excluding a few blips along the way, Amazon has mainly traded between 50 and 100 times earnings for most of the past decade. We can use the current PE ratio of 49.95 times here, which is at the bottom of the 10-year range. This gives us a valuation of $6.5 trillion for Amazon in 10 years' time. Now this might sound crazy, but let's look back 10 years. In 2014, Apple was the most valuable company on Earth at about half a trillion dollars. Today, it's worth six times more at over three trillion dollars. Here, we're just talking about Amazon growing three times, and given its undisputed position as the world's largest internet retailer, it's not hard to see that happening. So that is our forecasted free cash flows. Our fourth calculation is discounting our forecasted cash flows to the present value. First, we need to work out our discount rate. This is the rate we expect to earn from this investment. Most investors use their opportunity costs. A risk-free rate of government bonds is used by some investors, while others use the average return of the S&P 500 index. I personally like the latter approach, as when I pick individual stocks, it's because I expect its returns to beat the broader market. So the broader market, or the S&P 500, is my opportunity cost. Now, since the S&P 500 index was created in 1957, it has averaged a return of about 10.26%. So we'll use that figure as our benchmark. Now we can discount our cash flows. As a shortcut, let's use the NPV formula. Simply type equals, then the letters NPV, open bracket, select the 10.26% discount rate, and then select all of the cash flows from year one through to 10. You then have a value of just over $400 billion. Now let's discount the terminal value. Simply take the $6.5 trillion value Divide this by 1 plus the discount rate of 10.26% and then use a factor of 10, showing that we're discounting by 10 years. That gives us a value of about $2.4 trillion. If we add up both of the present values, the first being the cash flows and the second being the terminal value, we're left with about $2.9 trillion. The next step is something I like to do, so it's very much optional, but that is to subtract off a company's net debt. So far, we've only looked at how cash generative a business is based on its operations. Unfortunately, some companies deplete their cash on financing and investing activities, which can build their debt profile to unmanageable levels. To handle this, we need to add cash and subtract all the liabilities from our intrinsic value calculation. Looking at Amazon's balance sheets, you can see they have $73 billion in cash and a further $13 billion in liquid marketable securities. Adding these together, we get $87 billion, which is about $239 billion less than Amazon's total debt. So we must subtract the net debt of $239 billion from the present value of our cash flows, as eventually, Amazon will need to sacrifice this cash to repay the debts. This takes us to $2.6 trillion, our best estimate of Amazon's intrinsic value today. We can divide this figure by the number of issued shares, which tells us what the fair value of Amazon stock is today. According to Amazon's annual reports, which I've picked up from Stockopedia, Amazon has just over 10 billion shares on offer. Running the numbers, we get an intrinsic value of $252 per share. Amazon currently trades at $182 a share. At this point, many investors are apply what's called a margin of safety. Generally, this is between 30 and 50%. 
We have made several assumptions in our calculation, and this margin of safety accounts for possible overestimations. It also offers us as investors a little bit of extra wiggle room for the price to appreciate over and above our expected return we used as our discount rate. Let's use a simple measure of 30%, just to be safe. We are now left with a revised intrinsic value of $1.7 trillion, or $176 per share. If we look at the current stock price of Amazon, it is trading at $182. Using the assumptions that we've made, Amazon is currently 3.3% overvalued. These figures have been public since Amazon released their financials on the 31st of December 2023. Since the release, Amazon stock has risen 21% from $149 per share to $182. It's likely that they've done the same analysis that I have and determined it was undervalued earlier this year. Now feel free at this point to adjust your assumptions as required. For example, if we assume that Amazon grows by 17% on average instead of 15% that we used, all of a sudden our intrinsic value is higher than Amazon's current stock price, indicating that it may be undervalued by the market. I hope this calculation helps you on your stock valuation journey. It certainly helped on mine when looking for stocks trading below my interpretation of their fair value. If you like this video, please make sure to subscribe down below. I post a lot of content in the personal finance investing space. Thanks for watching and I look forward to catching you on the next one. Cheers.